Hi guys, welcome back to We Should Talk, a pop culture interview series from In The Know. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and today on the podcast, we have Farah, Brittany, and Alexia Umansky from Buying Beverly Hills on Netflix. Buying Beverly Hills is the show centered around uh, Mauricio Umansky's The Agency, all about real estate. You know, we know the family already from being the family of Kyle Richards from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So we've, we've seen them over the years pop in and out of the show, but this is really their moment in the spotlight. The show really is about Alexia and Farah and their coworkers. Um, and it, it's fun. It's, it's, a, it's a good watch. I binge it all in one weekend. Um, and so we talked a lot about the show, how it's being received. Um, you know, there's a big topic, you know, in the conversation around the show about nepotism and it being a family business. Um, and they, they acknowledged that and they had good response to that. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, being around reality TV cameras for, you know, over a decade of their lives already and how that prepared them for this moment. Um, you know, what, what it's like to see their to see their mother, Kyle, kind of go through these tougher seasons as she just had on Beverly Hills um, and sort of what they've learned from watching her go through those experiences. Um, you know, we touched on a lot and it, it was really fun to get some time with them. I really like them. I think it's, it's, it's cool to get to know them on a deeper level after, again, having seen them over the years but not really gotten a good grasp on them or their personalities. And, and Alexia is, is, in particular is so similar to Kyle. Um, there are definite shades of Kyle in this show. So if you're looking for a good binge, if you haven't watched Beverly, Buying Beverly Hills yet, it's a great watch, um, especially kind of over the holiday season as, as we all have more downtime in our lives. So keep listening for my interview with Farah, Brittany, and Alexia Umansky, and stream Buying Beverly Hills Season 1 on Netflix now. All right, so we're here with Farah, Brittany, and Alexia Umansky from Buying Beverly Hills. Thank you for being here, you guys. I'm excited to chat about the show. Thank we're you for having you. So, Alexia, you're at the office right now, right? Yeah, I'm actually in Ben Bellac's office right now. <laughs> Love, it. Love it. And Farah, are you at home? I'm at home. Yeah, I typically work from home. Mm-hmm. So, so what's the? So, I mean, I mean, for everyone who watched the show, we know that we ended the season with you both being slightly frustrated, but also you get to a moment with, with Mauricio where you say, let's get a director of operations. Let's, let's make it better for all of us. Is, is it better for all of us now? Is it, is it our things, is it a, like a better oiled machine now? Definitely. It definitely okay. is. Um, although we did not get a director of operations, <laughs> but okay. um, spoiler I alert. decided, okay. <laughs> spoiler alert, um, I decided to kind of take on that role and we've really got our systems and practices in a far, far, far better place than they were before. I mean, there's always room for improvement, but um, we are running more like a well-oiled machine. Good. Thank God. We have, we have team <laughs> meetings now. We're all we're every all week what's going on. Yeah. We're consistently in communication and it's a lot more of a, you know, let's talk what's going on there's communication and exactly me every week now. And it's incredible. Thank God. And that's what you guys wanted. I love it. All right. So, so, so zooming out first, I mean, the show is out now. Everyone's been able to watch it. I feel like there was kind of a long lead up with, with the show coming out because there was like rumors it was happening and then it was officially announced and the trailer came out. You filmed it a year ago. So how does it feel now to have these eight episodes out in the world and, and kind of, as you're kind of seeing how people are reacting to them? It's really exciting. It's crazy. I mean, I, we were like, we think this will do well. I mean, obviously we have sort of a built-in fan base to begin with and people love real estate. So it se- seemed like the perfect recipe, but I still I, am shocked that, you know, we're trending all over the world and in the top 10 in the US. So um, it's really exciting. It's like we were waiting forever and the time has finally come. I, I feel like I'm waiting for that moment that someone's going to pinch me and I'm going to wake up. It all still feels so surreal and I, like you said, this all happened about a year ago. And so I feel like I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this moment to finally be here. And now it's here and it's, it it doesn't feel real, but at the same time it does. And I'm just, you know, talking to everybody through Instagram and emails and, and in person people talking to me, it just, it, it makes it feel so just, I don't know, I'm having this out of body experience of just realizing that this is life now. Right. Totally. And it, it's funny because I feel like before it came out, people were like, oh, it's Mauricio's show. Like Mauricio's getting a Netflix show or whatever. But it's actually, it's your 
guys' show. Like it's it's the, it's the fair and Alexia show. Like you guys are much more prominent in the show than he is. He's more of like yeah. the kind of overarching person. But it like it, it's it's kind of nice now that people realize that that you guys are the main players in this in this new show. Well, that was a shock for us too, by the way. Oh, we didn't oh really? Know, we did not oh. know that was gonna be the spiel. Um, but yeah. I mean, yeah, we were kind of thrown the, into the main it. Dramas from you two, I feel like it's are the the main storylines. Yeah, the funny part is when they were casting in our whole office, the casting was going on for I guess months, and we just saw like on the bulletin board, you know, Netflix show, and Alexi and I were really checked out, and and then it was literally, I mean, months later that we we said, wait, what 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 is going on? There's a show, like, are we supposed to be a part of it? And Mauricio said, oh yeah, you guys are, you're already a part of it. Like we, I signed you guys up. And we're like, oh, cool. Who's going to be on it? What's the deal? Also thinking, you know, this is going to be his show. And he's like, no, you guys are, you guys are the stars. Like you guys are the next generation, um, you know, a more, the age group makes more sense and you guys yeah. are going to be the lead. So we were like, oh, wow, this is new to us. This is news, but um, we're like, okay, great. You know, I don't think we definitely maybe had a little hesitation, but then it's like, when are you going to get the opportunity to do a Netflix show? And if we didn't do it, are we going to, you know, be kicking ourselves? Yeah. So we're like, you know what, let's just go with the flow, see how this goes. And, um, but I didn't, I still couldn't foresee what was going to happen. I remember when, when Mauricio told us and I called him the next day, I was just like, are you sure this is a good idea? I am not nearly, nearly, nearly at a place where I want to put out to the world that this is who I am as an agent. Um, he like joked that I dance about like he told he told me that he told the producers that I get do a little dance every time I get like a two thousand dollar check. I'm like, woohoo, like made a <laughs> million dollars. <laughs> like, <laughs> and um and he's like, Alexia, you have to realize that that's exactly what's gonna make this whole thing so different. That's exactly why they thought this was an incredible idea. They don't want what every what's already out there. They want something new. You can be that person to show the world what it's like to rise up and, and just try your hardest. And I know, you, you know, I obviously really care about my job. And I, I, he told me that people would see that. And I was really nervous, but I'm happy to report that people are definitely seeing that. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I mean, and this isn't even to be shady about other shows. Cause I, I love the other shows that are also about real estate. Like I watch most of them, but even just a quick glance at your guys' Instagram accounts. And it's like, you guys, this is your job. And this is something you're really passionate about. And you spend your every day doing. And, mm -hmm. you know, was was that a worry almost that like, it would be like almost too, re too like reality showy, like that it would be too much like folks on the drama, not enough about the work. Or was that not yeah. a worry for you going in? Definitely a worry because I have established myself in this business for already so many years. So I'm yeah. like, is this going to do me a service or a disservice? You know, I want to make sure I maintain professionalism. And even though we trust the producers and Netflix and all that, you still don't know, we don't have final editing, right? So we still don't know exactly what's happening behind the scenes, um, really until it comes out. So we did hope, okay, we really hope this is truly based in real estate and less about the drama, but I think yeah. they found a great balance of both. I think so too. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Did you, did you, did you guys watch Selling Sunset, Million Dollar Listing? Did you watch the, any of those other shows like beforehand or even just to like see what those were like to compare it? I specifically did not watch Selling Sunset only because, and I give them all the kudos in the world, they're all killing it. But just because I didn't want to go into our show thinking I had to be some certain way to make yeah. a good show. So I didn't want to be clouded in any which way. But million dollar listing I've seen, you know, over the years, way before we even knew this show was going to happen. And I think they do a great job of being extremely professional. But I think in those shows, maybe you kind of miss the the personal connection with the with the cast. Sure. Alexi, what about you? Is the same thing? Yeah, that was a, a discussion that we had a while back. I had a lot of people telling me I should watch the show. And I had, I had seen clips. I know who the people are. And I think the Oppenheim brothers are so sweet and amazing. They've been really supportive of our show as well. Um, but a lot of my friends were like, you should watch their show and, you know, get in the rhythm of things. And then I talked to Farah. We both decided that let's let's go in blank slate. Let's make this something very different and peer to who we are. I don't think we really knew if it would end up being similar or not. But um, we just went in being our peer selves. And that's how it turned out. It feels very different, I would say. Like, I don't, I think it, yeah, there's a totally different tone to the shows. And that's again, like, I love Selling Sunset. I think it's a great show, but 
ultimately, like, I don't think it's fully about real estate, you know? And I think this show, right. it's, it's a little bit more grounded in that world. It feels well, a little more realistic in that way. Well, that's what I'm curious with. Are we getting, do you think we're getting a fan base of people that do appreciate both? Or, cause I was wondering like, oh, maybe we're just going to capture the people that selling Sunset isn't for them. Right. But I'm not really sure what the, yeah. what the feedback well, has been. It will be interesting because like, I feel, I mean, like Alexia, we saw towards the end of the season, you have an event where you invite a bunch of influencers to the house and it's sort of the the aim is to, to amplify the awareness of this property. And like, you know, <laughs> a show on Netflix is amplifying the agency to the entire world in a way that, you know, we knew about it from Real Housewives and, and, and just anybody who's paying attention to real estate knows about the agency, but like, this is, you know, 20 levels above that. So I, you probably can't tell yet if it's going to be good for business, right? I mean, or, or, or can you already sort of tell that people are interested in actually buying things through you guys? We're, I'm definitely getting a lot of emails and uh, our office is getting a lot of calls. Right now, it's kind of because it's so fresh, kind yeah. of hard to gauge. It's actually genuinely yeah. real. <laughs> I actually yeah. had a call this morning with somebody. She's going to call me back. We haven't been playing a little phone tag. But I'm like, is this person genuinely trying to buy a home in Beverly Hills or is she just want to pretend for the sake of you know, whatever. Totally. Does she want to talk but... to somebody who's been on Netflix? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And know. there's a lot of that. Yeah. We have a lot of phony people reaching out and it is. It's, e it's pretty easy to tell though, for the most part. Um, but then again, it's like, you can't just assume that they're not real because yeah. then you, you might turn take your back. Take on it all like seriously. A, exactly. Yeah. So we kind of have a, a, a system in place just to do a little pre-vetting um, before we, we talk to them. Okay, good. And what, uh, what sort of, have you guys been monitoring the reaction to the show? Have you seen, have you gotten kind of common points of feedback since it's been out for five or six days now? Yes. I, yeah. What Fair are those? Been. Um, well, for me, I find that Instagram is a lot nicer, um, because people are Always. coming to you usually to say something right. nice, unless they're just really just going there just to be rude. But I hadn't been on Twitter in like years and years. So I was like, Oh, I wonder what's going on here. Since people are not really, they're not tweeting at you. They're just giving their unbiased opinions. Um, and I'd say it's for the most part, like people are really, really loving it. They're really surprised. They're saying it's super refreshing. Obviously we're going to get some haters out there and, Oh, this is a nepotism, whatever. Um, and all those kinds of comments too. But um, overall, it's it's been good feedback. Good. I have had people in every industry reach out to me and basically thank me for opening up and making them feel understood. I've had people that didn't make it in real estate and make them, they were telling me it made them feel okay and that it is hard. And, and it's funny because they're saying that I comforted them in a way, but they're all making me feel so much more comfortable with the process I let out for the world to see. So I've just, like Farah said, it's been so positive, so much love. Like Instagram has been so sweet. Everyone I've seen all the messages. I, I still have a million to open and I'm so grateful. I have not looked at Twitter, but I've heard it's really good. And the number one thing I'm getting, honestly, is not even just about people relating to me, but it's about how much I look and yeah. sound like my mom. That's like the most, most, most I am I getting. thought that too. And, and it's not mm -hmm. something that you've got. I've never really observed that on Housewives before. And it may just be don't get as much like one-on-one -on -one time with you on the, sh on the show like that. But like, yeah. if, if Farrah, is that something that you had noticed outside of the show just as being a sister, uh, Alexia's sister? Yeah. Um, they both kind of have like a raspy voice. They've always kind of sounded similar, but I'm even shocked that people are saying that I sound just like my mom too, which I don't agree with, but <laughs> a lot I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of that too. Really? It's, it's really, really funny. And people, I read one comment yesterday that said, um, it seemed like we studied our mom's mannerisms in the confessionals <laughs> because our mannerisms are exactly like hers. And mm. I'm like, well, I don't know about studied her mannerisms, maybe genetics. Maybe we were raised by her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You lived in the same house with her for yeah. <laughs> 25 years. Right. <laughs> that is so funny. But, it, and I, I think that she posted about it too. So it, it's, it is kind of a familiar, there's a familiar vibe to it because we've been a part of your family through TV for what, 12 years now. So it's kind of cool to yeah. have, have the spotlight be on other people in the family as well. Yeah, yeah, we're getting a lot of that too. I just find it funny because I'm heavily invested in reality TV also. And like, you really do get invested in it, but I'm still surprised that other people, I mean, they're taking lengthy notes, they're doing deep dives. And I'm like, wow, even though I do the same thing, like, it's just, it's still a yeah. new it, feeling. You're, you're, you're the, you're the subject now. Yeah. Right? And <laughs> it's crazy. 
Um, I mean, so I guess like y- you must have known that the one of the kind of talking points coming out of the show would have been sort of like the nepotism subject or whatever. And I, and I feel like it it's interesting timing for the show because that sort of became a thing on TikTok recently where people were sort of like, Oh really? Oh, yeah, people people, know that. people are like post these videos and be like, "Well, you did you know that like this actor is like the son of this person or whatever?" And like they were sort mm-hmm. of it, it was sort of a thing that was already happening. But I feel yeah. like the difference here is that it's people are sort of it's nepotism, my guess, but it's also a family business, and I think that that's that's sort of the distinction that I make in my mind, which is like this is your family business, and it's you guys are naturally going into it, and that's a little different, I think, than you know, a singer or an actor getting a a, a movie role because of their father or mother being somebody, you know what I mean? So I'm curious how you think about it now that the show is out and you have seen some of that feedback, like, does it change your perspective on it? Does it, do you remain sort of, sort of in the same perspective as you used to have about it? Um, I don't think we ever denied that we've had major opportunities or advantages. I'm not sitting here. We're not sitting here saying like, no, we've had no different ad- advantages than anybody else. We're like everyone else. We're not saying that. So I completely recognize our privilege. And that being said, um, there's also a point to mention, like we're in the commission based business. So it's not like, you know, Mauricio owns the company. We're on salary, taking away a job that somebody else maybe could have gotten. So that's one thing I'd say. Number two is like, for example, giving Alexia the listing on Mauricio's house That has nothing to do with him being the CEO of the company. Like he was actually the client. That was his house. He got to choose his agent. So yes, maybe it's unfair to some people. Um, And if that's somebody's opinion, that's completely okay. Um, But Mauricio also is allowed to choose who he wants to sell his own property. So there's like different layers there. Of course. Yeah. It's it's not as simplistic as people, I think, kind of try to slap the label on to it, I think. Yeah. But then again, I'm completely acknowledging we definitely had advantages being able to come into the business and work with $20 million plus properties. That's not a normal thing, of course. So we do need to say that we we recognize that. Mm -hmm. Totally. I think, um, no, I think I, I struggled a lot with the feeling of nepotism and recognizing it and feeling this major sense of guilt for it way before the show even started. I was so terrified walking into the office the first day and just immediately knowing that what I was walking into and something that someone told me once that really, really stuck with me when I opened up to that person about how I'm feeling guilty and how I feel embarrassed to try and all that stuff. Um, she said to me, it's not how you get it. It's what you do with it. And that's kind of what, just what I tell with myself all the time is, you know, you know, fair and I, yes, we are, we're so, we have so many opportunities in front of us, but we both work really hard. Our parents work really, really hard and we're, we're not lazy. We want it. We want the success. We want to give our life meaning and something to look forward to. We have goals that we want to reach. And so I, I hope that's what people really see is that we genuinely don't just like come in and la di da di da we're, we're, we want to work. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and I think that the, the most important part, like, which is what you both did was you acknowledge it. And that's, I think that a lot of times in, in Hollywood, it's not acknowledged. I think that that's an important distinction as well. Um, mm. But I think that you both handled that very well on the show as well. So, um, and I think it comes across, I really do. Um, so, you know, we do get some kind of peaks at your, at your personal lives in the show as well. Fair. Congratulations on, I know it's been a year, but on your engagement, Thank it, you. it, 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 as, as the show just coming out, it feels like it just happened. You know what I mean? Yes, 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 do, it does. Do you Sorry, feel like there's sort like of a renewed excitement again. around it? For sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. For sure. So what's, what's the wedding update? Wedding update is we haven't started planning the wedding, but we're <laughs> okay. about to very soon now. Love it. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I just was trying to enjoy it. And I mean, really time flies so quickly when you're this busy also, it just like, I blinked and a year went by. So yes, if I could turn back time, I wish I kind of got my ass in motion like six months ago, but what can, <laughs> what, we're here now. So and the problem <laughs> is the dresses take so freaking long. Mm. So I was like, oh my God, I should at least get a dress. I, I did get one about a month ago. But okay, you have, ready to, you have to get that, but you have to get that right. Like that's a non-negotiable. So. Oh yeah, that's a non-negotiable. <laughs> so, okay. So we have at least like there we go. six months plus. Okay. But All right. And also soon, happy soon. blade of birthday. How, how was most recent Farrowween? What, 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 what was the vibes there this year? 
the vibe this year was I'm like, okay, I'm 34. I'm not going to do a big fairween maybe next year. But then I'm like, oh, but the wedding, maybe I'll do like a joint. Um, I don't know. Okay. Um, it was more just like the calm before the storm, knowing, knowing the show was about to come out. So we went to some Halloween parties and that's the beauty of having a birthday on Halloween. It's like, everybody's down to go out. I have other places to go and I can feel like I'm celebrating even if I don't do my own thing. So I uh, went out with Alex over the weekend. And then on Monday on my actual birthday, just had a dinner with the family. Um, early, nice Love dinner, it. chill. Amazing. The best, the best. Yes. And Alexia, the, the, the last episode, there's this, it's, it's a really sweet moment between you and Joey. It's sort of like you're, 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 you're saying you love each other as friends. And it's sort of like you've been in each other's lives for so long. But, but it does sort of hinge on this sort of like, you know, it, it sort of pairs you together and it's like, uh, will they, won't they kind of thing in the future. Where are you and Joey now? Are you still friends? Is there more to it? Joey and I are just friends. Okay. I am actually in a very, very great and healthy relationship with my boyfriend, Jake. Um, and he's been very supportive through this whole thing. Him, Jake, Joey, and I all went to high school together. So we're okay. all really really good friends and there's been communication throughout the whole process and um you know just honesty the two of them have talked we've all talked and you know all love for joey but we are just friends is it but so it must be weird to have that have this come out now when you're like in a totally different relationship and because <laughs> it's it, it sort of it's sort of left on like the will they won't they know i think in the show <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah you know i mean it is what it is, is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that showbiz baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, so your mom, Kyle Richard, so we all know from Beverly Hills Housewives, she's only on the show via FaceTime when fair you get engaged and she, she starts crying, which is, you know, totally not unexpected from Kyle. We love that. Yes. Was <laughs> could she could she not be on the show because of Housewives? Is that what it was? Um I think it was never a clear yeah. answer, but but yeah. we're pretty sure I mean, it makes sense film with her once or twice. And then it, I think it just became one of those. We didn't want to I think it. conflict. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what it was. But. And also she is very, very, very busy doing, I mean, her movie last year and filming housewives and all that. So it's not like she had right. all that much time anyways, um, yeah. but it would have been but like, nice she, but like she must've more. been there for like Farrowween or she, she must've been at Farrowween and just wasn't was, I forgot. Was she up? Like, was she? There? Oh, she wasn't I there. Uh, I, I think I she was remember. filming the Halloween movie actually. Oh, or right. She okay. Was, she was working. Maybe, um, yeah. She was there the day of the barbecue though. Okay. So yeah. we just, we just, they just decided to sort of I guess. stay away from that. Okay. Yeah. Um, But I mean, you guys both have like, you, you know, this is your sort of, moment in the spotlight I would say but in a, in a bigger way but you've both been around the cameras for over a decade now how did that first experience with reality tv prepare you for for what you just did with buying Beverly Hills um I think I've had a taste of it like my whole life I've you know my cousin Paris has had multiple reality shows that I've kind of been a part of and then our mom so I've always so I after all these years, kind of got the hang of things, definitely. But so definitely prepared me for this. However, being a full-time cast member of your own show is a, a completely different ball game. That's when the pressure is really on you. You have to start thinking about like, you know, showing up every day and being on and making sure you're being authentic and fun and entertaining and all those things. When you're a side character and like my mom's show, it's, you don't have that kind of pressure. You're just, there to be a sounding board or a good time so yeah. it, it prepared us but still you can never be fully prepared mm -hmm. I was definitely shocked about how exhausting the process was and trying to like Farrah said trying to look cute and trying to be on and trying to be professional and just all the all the stuff that you want to be but the reality is is that I do think Farrah and I would kind of have a different situation where she was out of the house a lot more and I grew up with the cameras in my house. I want to say like six months of the year. They're in and out of the house all the time. And through that for 12 years, I've grown up with that. So in that process, I've learned that there's, you know, the cameras, they're not just cameras, like there's people holding the cameras, there's people handling the mics, and there's people all around you that are real people. And I've built such a good relationship with the crew on Real Housewives that when I um went on buying Beverly Hills. It didn't feel like, it doesn't feel like cameras to me anymore. It feels like 
your friends in a room almost. It was so quick to become so friendly with the crew that immediately I felt very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously doing showings and whatnot is very scary because you're just like, oh my God, I'm doing this for so many more people than just the people out here right now. Totally, yeah. But I've, it's, it really set me up to be so comfortable. I don't look at just cameras and think cameras. Like it's, it's people in a room that I'm comfortable with. Um, I'm just, yeah, comfortable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, we've, we've known your mom, we've we've seen your mom on on TV for so long and there's been so many like ups and downs over the years. And, And her show is so much more like personal. It's so much, or it's so much more about like the personal drama. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, and you had to know that like you guys weren't going to have as much of that, I guess, but how did watching her go through some of these harder years, like this year, help you sort of like, I don't know, how, how does, how did that experience kind of affect and prepare you for, for what you guys were doing? Well, Mm -hmm. I could say that Sarah definitely is a lot more in the loop with what's going on. Um, I do think me still living at home, it affects me differently as well. Again, just because I am very emotional, just like my mom. And if I'm being totally honest, it's very hard for me to see a lot of the stuff that these women go through. And it's, it's really, really nerve wracking that's for sure and obviously my mom has had her two sisters on the show with her and it gets rocky and here I am going on a show with my sister and possibly my other sister and my father and that part was a little offsetting but we're a very healthy relationship me and Farah me and Sophia me and my dad and it's we're not we're just different people. And, um, I don't know, it just, it's different, but it was, it was a little scary in the beginning. That's for sure. Sarah, how do you think about it? Um, I think, well, obviously this, this season hadn't aired when we started filming last year. And I think this was, is probably agreeably our mom's hardest season ever on, on housewives, but seeing how she's handled it thus far, obviously, um, she's been an emotional wreck but the fans were very tough on her and that has scared the crap out of me basically waiting for this show to come out. Cause we had no idea how it was going to be received. Um, or if any of that backlash was going to spill onto the show. And there are some people like that, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just looking at her, how is she handling this? Like she doesn't read the comments really anymore right. and she's doing her best to just stay centered and, not let all that noise affect her or our home as much yeah. as she can. But there are definitely days where she's really upset by all of it. So that just scares me for the future of like, this is the world that we are now in. And it's all fun and games when, you know, the audience is on your side, like yeah. they are now. But if that doesn't, you know, stay in the future, I don't want to be tied to the audience opinion either way. Um, because then it's just going to, it's eventually going to happen where it, it's going to be painful. Yeah. I think you have to kind of think about it as like the audience is so fickle. So like literally one week they might not like you. Then the other week they're going to like you again. And your, your mom has gone through that, but even if this is the hardest year, like she has to know that there, it can't get worse than this. You know what I mean? It's going to get, there are brighter days for her. And so I, it's, it's probably just about keeping that perspective and that balance on it, but that it's, it's a hard thing to do. It's easier said than done. Yeah, And I, I mean, she delivered, you know, 11 years before that of people loving her. And then they're so quick to just toss it all away. Um, yeah. which I think is, is, is crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but well, what I was going to say is, um, but the thing is yeah, with audiences like that is like, they don't want you pandering to the audience because they're also very smart. So they're like, right. Don't go for the, you know, don't, do what the audience wants to do, be authentically you. And then you do that. And it's like, doesn't matter. You lose either way. So it, yeah, the only thing yeah. you should be able to do is just be yourself. Cause at yeah. least you that, can have integrity. And that's why you don't read the comments. Cause it's like, if you just don't know what they, what they're saying, then yeah. just be yourself. Right. Cause then you're not going to sort of yeah, self-produce yeah, yeah. or anything like that. Um, okay. So you, Alexa, you sort of alluded to this, which is Sophia shows up in the, at the very end of this first season and it's sort of like, hi, I might be here too. Does, <laughs> does she work at the agency now? 
she's studying for her real estate license right now and she has not started coming into the office just yet but next week is our agency forum which is where all the offices from around the world come together oh, and we fun. kind of learn about markets and the company mm-hmm. and blah, blah blah and she's going to be coming to that and i think that's going to be i think it's really going to open her eyes and she's going to be like i want to start coming in every day <laughs> She'll be a fun dynamic if this happens. I don't think any of us even realized that this was happening. And uh, even she's laughing about it, but that was the plan anyways, is that she probably was going to join on her own accord. And if she does, we all have very different personalities and she is hilarious, like dry humor. So funny. Um, So I think it'd be really fun to have another sister and I don't know what everyone else is going to think, but it's the perfect way to, it's the perfect way to end to, to sort of kick off a potential second season, which I hope we get. Is there any word on whether we can get, whether we're getting another season or or is it too early to say? Apparently it's too early to say. I'm like, isn't it guaranteed if we're trending all over the world, top 10, right? Apparently nothing is a guarantee. So I got to wait and see. I'm also like, I'm hearing about the event that you guys have like what next week. It's like, we need, we need, we need the cameras up. We need, we need you guys mic'd. <laughs> I know we tried to have it last year, but I guess the hotel that we do this event at, they wouldn't let us. So we couldn't film there, which would have been such a win if we were able to. So there's all there's those, nothing you know. That- embodies our company culture more than the agency forum we have like the most incredible speakers and parties. Most incredible culture and parties all oh, the party is going to be so fun this year Vibes. I have it. do you guys yeah. feel like do you guys feel like i mean on that same note that your that your workplace that your guys's dynamic that your dynamic with mauricio do you feel like all of that was portrayed as as it actually is or do you feel are there any moments where you were like huh very good question Um, I think for the most part, yes, I do see some people saying like, oh, I'm jealous of Alexia couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, and in terms of Mauricio and I, like that was a real thing that happened of just me feeling very stressed and kind of not really like knowing how to identify like what it really was. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think it came off to me a little harsh because I also, so spoke in length about, you know, how much I love him and how much I appreciate and how I acknowledge that like, I am where I am because of him. And I don't think you got to see that part. So it, it made it seem like we have issues or that I don't know. And that part bothers me because we have a very loving dynamic. And um, so it, it does make me a little sad that people are thinking like, oh, she doesn't like him or like she wants to leave and she should leave. And it's like, no, we just like a, one, one, conflict dynamic that's going to happen in business. And people don't realize like having the job that Mauricio does as CEO of company with 600 agents and his own team, there's so everyone wants something. Everyone wants more. He's in a difficult position. (laughs) He really is. Um, And there's conversations that need to be had and, you know, maybe adjustments need to be made, but that's what happens when you own a company. Yeah. Yeah, Alexi, what about you? Did it, do you feel like it all kind of came across as as it was? Honestly, yeah. I I mean, I'm in the office all the time. It shows me in the office all the time. It shows me coming up with fun open house ideas, which I do all the time still. I just had a really fun mariachi band open house um, two weeks ago, and that was a really <laughs> fun success. My dad sings some mariachi. Um, you know, the dynamic I have with my with my friends here at the office was portrayed very real. I'm always in here. We're always having fun. I, I do agree with Farah with some sense where it's like, you know, maybe some stuff was, I won't repeat what she said, but. The, you, we we heighten some, we heighten some of the more dramatic tensions that there are, which, which happens yeah, in reality TV. Right. We, we were talking about our frustrations with, with our lack of communication and under being underappreciated, especially Farah. Uh, long before the show started filming. And so it really was the perfect way for us to kind of just like, you know what, we need to be out there and speak up. Yeah. And I want, I I don't know if I should be doing this, but I would like to dispel one rumor also that he did not steal that listing from me. (laughs) So people are, I'm reading, some people are saying he stole the listing. (laughs) So I'll just really quickly clarify that. So this was a listing I brought to the table. Um, and usually, you know, Mauricio is bringing me on to help him with a listing. This time sure. I thought $85 million listing, I got the contact, but if I want to actually get the listing, it's probably a good idea for me to bring on Mauricio. So we, it was a little bit of a role reversal. 
um, once I brought him on, the seller actually was like, unfortunately, like, oh, well, I don't need you. I'll, I'll take him. And I said, that's totally fine. I'll, I'll be in the back. Uh, you manage this one. You be the quarterback. I'll just get a piece of the check in the end. So he was totally taking the lead and, and just back to the communication. He's so busy. I didn't know that actually was an escrow and sold. I was going to get a piece of that anyways, but that's the story. He did not steal a listing from me. I think that's a good clarification. Do it, do yeah. it, go for it. That's the time. One thing to clarify too, <laughs> is that yes, all that was very real and portrayed very honestly, mm. but is that who I am today? No, I've had a really, really, really good year of real estate ever since. She's killing it. I'm killing it. And in the show, I say I sold about six million. Then with the team, I would say now in one year, I've sold closer to thirty-two million. Woo -woo! Love it. That's amazing. That's that's. that's and I owe a lot of it right to there. the show. I really yeah. do. It really, like, made me look at my mistakes and made me. It pushed me, and yeah. I'm doing really well. So that's, that's what that, that was what I was going to say. It was like I feel like you know you said there were some of these conversations that are already happening up before the show started filming and. You know, I think some of the stuff is probably in motion, but like filming the show and getting it all onto the episode, it's like it kind of forces it to happen and it kind of fast tracks some of these things and solving yes. some of these issues, which is kind of a a cool way for it to, to make it happen, right? Like 100%. It, yeah. That's so right. That's so cool. Yeah. The producers basically said to me, it was my first time trying to sell a $6 million home. And they basically said, we have eight weeks. If you don't sell it, too bad. You <laughs> and got I was like, it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> it's so scary, but we did it and it was great. That's amazing. Um, and then lastly, you know, I feel like, I mean, you mentioned like your your mom filming with her sisters for years and you guys came onto the show as as sisters and it seems like you're kind of closer than ever almost, but is that is that accurate? Like how has this impacted your relationship as sisters? And um, it seems like you're in a really great place with one another. Not, not like you ever weren't, but you know, it just seems like it brought you closer. Yeah. Closer than ever. For 100 percent. Sure. Yeah. Also our age gap. So we didn't necessarily grow up as close because we're eight years apart. And when you're 12 and 20 or whatever, yeah. it, it's a <laughs> huge difference. Of life. Yeah. But when she started working with us and we get to hang out every day, we talk multiple times a day. We like to meet up and like do work next to each other every day. So we, I think we've never been closer and this sharing that. this experience has been so fun and I just want the best for her. Uh, I love that so much. Well, you guys, I, I love buying Beverly Hills. I hope we get a second Yay. season, get, get, get the three sisters all together. I, I'm, I'm excited Thank for the prospect you. of that. I'm glad that you're soaking up the love of of the viewers from this show. And I'm sure it's only going to continue because it's Netflix. That stuff stays popular for, for a while. Um, but thanks for taking the time to talk today. And um, I'll see you guys soon. Thank, Thank you so much. You so that was great. Yeah. Yes, great questions. Yeah, of course. Thanks so, <laughs> okay, thanks have a so great much. Day. Bye guys. Thanks. thanks for tuning in to We Should Talk. I hope you enjoyed the interview. You can find out more about In The Know at inthenow.com. You can follow me, Gibson Johns, at Gibsonoma on Twitter and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our interviews, past and future, by searching We Should Talk wherever you get your podcasts. Hope to see you next time.